Hello again, Michael Friedrich here from beautiful North Carolina. Before we start today's shave, let's just take a moment to remember those who lost their lives in this day 15 years ago. Be family, be friends, colleagues, schoolmates, classmates, first responders, friends of mine such as Tom Glasser and Calvin Gooding. Just take a moment today to remember those. All right, well, let's go and get started with today's shave. Today, I have two new products and the return of, a, uh, of, an, of an older razor. Today's shave is going to be the second uh, soap I received from Abate y La Mantilla. Today is the Cromiro, a very different color soap, a very different, uh, a very different base for the soap in terms of the scent than the Vegano from last time. Today's soap is based on a very popular cookie. I think it's a cornmeal based cookie called the Cromiro. You can't only eat one, so apparently you always order Cromiri. So the soap, the soap is brown and it has a slightly, um, I don't know, it has kind of a, a different looking texture to it. It looks a little bit crummy on top. When you first get it, it's very visible. I've already been scooping out some samples and I have some pressed into the lather bowl. The scent on the soap, well, the scent is delicious. I don't know how else to describe it. It has a, a, a somewhat chocolatey scent with a hint of vanilla in there. Um, it just smells really good. So you often describe, you know, soap scents in terms of more traditional sort of perfume or an aftershave scent. This doesn't smell shaving so good. This smells food good. This just smells delicious. Like if that's what a Cremiro cookie tastes like, Wow, then, well, no wonder it's a popular biscuit. Now, the idea behind the soap is, I'm just screwing the lid back on, it does come, by the way, I don't think I mentioned this in the last video, it comes in these very large metal screw top containers, it's a five ounce container. I think the thinking behind this particular soap, it's the same uh, saffron base uh, for the soap, and the idea here is that there's a little bit more uh, sort of grit to it, sort of helps build a lather, helps your skin a little bit, um, I've not found it to be gritty at all. In fact, it just lathers up like any other shaving soap, but it's kind of a nice conceit to the soap. I have a little bit pressed into the Captain's Choice soap loading bowl. Today, I'm going to be using a new brush as well, which is this, let me just make sure I can get that in there, the Vialong. This is a horsehair brush. Um, I believe this is a 20 millimeter knot. It's a tiny little knot. I've used it for, well, almost the full two weeks. Uh, it is, when dry, the tips are very soft. I can still feel it, but there's a lot of backbone to this. So if any of the hairs don't bend, there's a bit of scritch in there. It has uh, worked very well with the soap. So I'll go and get that started. Um, my, like the bore brushes, you need to soak horsehair brushes before you use them. So it's been sitting in a uh, the apothecary mug full of warm water for you know five minutes or whatever. Today's razor is going to be the return of the Fatip Gentile, the Testina Gentile. Um, I just wanted to point out, by the way, I hope you can see this on the camera, what is in fact happening to the gunmetal plating. I'd mentioned in the previous video that the plating did not seem to be too durable. Yeah, really not durable at all. I'm losing quite a bit of plating off the top cap. I don't know if you can see that, the glare of the light, but there's quite a bit that's missing. Uh, maybe that's a better view. And you can see what's happening to the handle. So, not great. In fact, really disappointing in some ways because I really, really like this razor. Um, losing the plating is, is a pain. It's not the end of the world, obviously, because the razor still shaves fantastic, but I wonder if the chrome version might not have been a better choice in the long run. All right, let me just wet my face again and we'll go and start lathering. Now, for the soap, it is the same saffron-based uh, soap, so there's no difference in that regard. The scent is obviously really quite different, and like I said, it just smells delicious. Lathering with this brush has been no problem. Now, I will note that when it starts, even with a relatively dry brush, um, it may be this brush in part, a very foamy lather begins, um, but that comes together on the face easily with no issues. So you can see what's happening. It looks very bubbly around the sides. Nah, don't worry. I'm gonna give it a good load.
yeah, pleasantly surprised by the brush. There's a bit of a, a little bit of funk when I first got it, but after a couple lathers and just uh, washing it with some baby shampoo, that scent is quickly gone. You can see what's happening now, how quickly that's lathering. Beautiful, beautiful foam starting. And I'm going to put that on. I'm not going to lose that. So let me just start with that. Yeah, and you'll see what happens. That's going to that's going to get knocked down into a very nice lather very quickly. Um, I've used this uh, for two weeks, one week while traveling and using a synthetic brush. Did not have the same experience with these with these bubbles, so I suspect it's something to do with um, with the brush. Yeah, there it goes again. Yeah, pleasantly surprised by the brush. The first few shaves were a little scritchy. And I thought, oh, maybe this won't work out. But it has been breaking in very nicely. When you push down, you can feel the backbone and a little bit of scritch, but nothing bad. All right, time to add some water to that. Yeah, it's a small brush, but you can see what's happening in terms of the lather. I'm just gonna scoop that off. Scent on the soap remains, remains throughout, a nice sweet, you know, to me it smells chocolatey with some vanilla in there, maybe a hint of coffee. There we go. Yep. This soap, just like the Vegano, is very easy to lather. Feels good going on. Okay, let me get the get the razor warmed up a little bit. The blade I'm using today is a Voskhod, and it is the third blade I've used in this razor. It started off with an Astra SP, which went great. I switched to a Persona Med Prep, and it was terrible. Uh, just unbelievably rough, painful shave. Switched to the Voskhod, checked the alignment, which was right on the Med Prep as well. Huge difference right away. Now, I have not used a med prep before, at least I don't remember using them. So it may just be that that particular blade in this razor is no good. I'll obviously use it in some others and we'll see. Yeah, the difference in the shave was night and day. Yeah, I really can't fault the performance of the razor. Still easy to shave with. I still really like the design. Bummed about the plating. Yeah, there's gotta be a way to get plating onto this that's not gonna come off that easily. Yeah, you can feel the blade, but the blade doesn't feel out of control. It doesn't feel like it's any kind of blade chatter. It doesn't feel overly aggressive. No pressure, nice and light. And very good, very good audible feedback there. Really hear what you're doing. Yep, starting to get a little tuggy up there. I think this might be the fifth shave on this blade. Astra lasted full week. This is two plus days worth of growth. So you can see, I mean, it really, it knocks it down quickly and the soap does a great job there. It's really slick. Easy to apply, lather stays in, you know, stays intact, holds up. No drying out. Rinse is clean, but you still have a good layer of slickness there. All right. You can see there's drippage on the brush, which means there's drippage on the arm. Don't like that. 
yeah, second pass, very nice creamy feel to this. Um, there have been a couple times where I've had to go back and just reload the brush a little bit from the bowl. We'll see if that's necessary this time for a third pass. Definitely a small knot, but you can see how much lather is still in there. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah, it's really quite funny. I didn't expect the uh, the color to be quite so brown when I first opened up the uh, opened up the soap. And obviously, I've had other soaps that uh, that are colored as well. But the Vegana was so white, and this was so brown. Had this really cool texture on top before I started scraping off some samples for people. All right, this is the across the grain pass. Just have to watch it here. A little bit of skin irritation. Yeah, I think this blade is on its last legs here a little bit. Not to worry, it'll certainly make it through the shave. Yeah, good, good slickness on this soap, easy, no friction, no difficulties. Yeah, I mean, I'm still going to recommend this razor because I think it just it just shaves. It shaves well. I just wish that the uh, the manufacturing was as good as the resulting shave, honestly. It's really a shame to have something like plating loss, you know, cut into your potential sales. But you know what? There's a way to fix that. Better blading. Yeah, there, see, no, a sort of a different angle for the across the grain. No tugging, no friction. Easy, easy shave. And I don't think I'm going crazy. I think my beard is, in fact, actually getting a little bit tougher. I've noticed in parts of my mustache, parts around my chin, it just seems somehow harder to shave through. More gray, maybe. Yeah, I have to say, I really like the soap. And for the... Uh, for the entire two weeks, I have not used an aftershave bomb and I've not had any real issues with my skin there. Okay, let me go and get my face wet and rinse off again for the uh, against the grain pass. But it's an interesting question lately too about sort of the order of passes and what you have to do and supposed to do. And if you are a new wet shaver and you just don't feel comfortable with that third against the grain pass, then don't do it. With the grain, no issue. An across the grain pass, and then do a second across the grain pass, just in the opposite direction. And you may be surprised at just how good a shave you get. All right, I'm gonna pull some of the lather out of the brush. I'm gonna pull some of the lather out of the bowl, because there's still some in there. Let's do that. Don't have that to go to waste. I'm actually gonna add a little bit of water. Oh yeah, that feels really good. Very, very nice face feel. No scritchiness from the brush when painting at all. Yes, vigorous face lathering. I guess those bristles are stiff enough. That does, does scratch a little bit, but I was nervous that the brush is just gonna be unpleasantly stiff. Um, I have one of the, uh, the Razor Rock Amici, which is a mixed boar and badger. Um, and there's something about the ratio of the hair in there for some reason that has remained, even though it's broken in, has remained just on the other side of unpleasantly pricky, prickly, I should say. Okay, against the grain.
Yeah, nice good glide still. Yeah, there's certain spots right there as you make the turn over the jawline when the blade starts to go now you know that that's uh, that's a spot right there a little tiny bit dull but still getting a pretty good shape out of it there we go these are no pressure just gliding it over I know I'm shaving where there's no lather, but there's still enough sort of slickness and protection there that it doesn't matter. The other trick there is to keep the razor wet. Oh yeah, a blade. But see right there, doing some uh, some light buffing. That soap may look thin, that leather may look thin, still very nice and slick. There we go. Yeah, slight turn. There we go. Just wet that a little bit. Yeah, still. Yeah, uh, that's good slickness right there. Nice. Like buffing to close it out. Yeah, nice. Hmm. Mad, comfortable, easy shave. Okay. Great results again. I like that razor. It's a great combination with that blade. Let me go ahead and rinse my face off. Really liking these soaps. I like the fact that there's a good range of differences in the uh, in the scents and sort of the uh, like the color and the packaging. Um, I still have two more to go. Interested to see what they look like. I haven't even opened them up yet. Yeah, rinse is clean. Well, where you can get your fingers in there, obviously. Ah, too much soap in my ear. All right, like I said, I have spent the last two weeks uh, shaving, rinsing and then just applying aftershave to get a good feel for the post-shave skin feel. I've not, had, I've not had any kind of dry patches or irritation or just, nope. Let me just dry that off a little bit more. Mm. Man, that was a nice, very nice shave. Even with the blade that's definitely nearing the uh, end of its useful life. Yeah, soap has been very good and uh, effect on my skin, very nice. No tightness, no heat. Yeah, good, good shave, very nice shave. Now the aftershaves I've been using have been uh, some samples from a Meissner Tremonia. Now you won't be able to see much on the label, but I think you can maybe see it there, Meissner Tremonia. Um, I think I've got six samples, um, some for scents I haven't tried, some for ones I had. So I've had uh, Himalayan Heights as an aftershave scent did not work for me at all. The aftershave itself is really quite nice. Um, I believe it has its alcohol, glycerin, um, it has witch hazel included. This is a um, this is the mint ice menthol. So it has uh, menthol in there, eucalyptus, uh, and some mint, obviously. I've already worked through one, which is the dark limes, and the dark limes smells like one of those small, very dark green limes. If you've zested the uh, zested the, the, um, the skin and also squeeze out some of the lime juice, you have a kind of a really nice mix 
of a really heavy, not a sweet lime scent at all, but a very, very nice scent as an aftershave worked very well. The mint ice menthol um, is more mentholated than I would normally use, but I have to say it's been 95 or 100 degrees here the last couple of days on um, the week. It's been very hot, and so I've been quite enjoying this blast of menthol. And it's mentholated enough that, in fact, tears your eyes up a little bit. A nice mint feel to it. It's got a little bit of a slick face feel, which I think is the glycerin. Combination of the alcohol and the witch hazel makes for a very nice sort of post-shave skin skin healing or skin feel. Warm the hands up a little bit. Oh, see, that makes my eyes water. It just It's just strong enough. Not a big menthol head, but I have to say in the heat lately, this feels very good going on. Dries down pretty quickly, but still leaves a nice, um, for the least for the first few minutes, a nice slick, a nice slick feel to it. Now, there's one thing to point out about these samples, by the way, which is that it comes in this really nice glass bottle, but it also comes without a regulator. So, one, you have to be kind of careful when you're glugging it out into your hand. And I have had one instance where when I put it down, my hands were a little slippery and it tipped. I did manage to catch it in time, so some, in fact, did spill. So. Just something to bear in mind if you are getting the samples from Meister Colonia, just be aware, no regulator in the uh, in the top of the glass bottle. Well, another smooth, easy shave. Still sweating from after my shower, but that's okay. Man, that was good, nice and smooth, comfortable. No irritation, no nicks, no cuts. Let's cover everything we've used for today. Let's do the old first. Yep. The fat tip, Testina Gentile. Um, it weighs less. So much plating has fallen off. Uh, yeah, plating is, is, is going, which um, I am kind of bummed about. On the other hand, it still shaves very well. I'm going to go back and try another of the Persona um, Med Prep in there. Um, but this razor will fall out of the rotation for a short bit. I've got two new razors coming in. So I probably won't get back to this for quite a while. But still, in terms of shaving, I can still 100% recommend this razor. If you're nervous about the aesthetic qualities of the razor, this may not be the razor for you. Maybe the chrome stays on better, but in terms of the gum metal finish, um, no, not, not, not doing well at all. The brush for today was this V-Long Horsehair 20 millimeter. Beautiful brown natural color to the horsehair. Works fantastically, has been breaking in, I think, very naturally and easily. A little bit of funk to start off with, which was very quickly taken care of. Um, I do love the handle shape. I do love the wood handles. Just a very natural, easy, easy brush shape for me to hold. Kind of a fan of those retro style handles anyway. Uh, today's soap, the Cremiro from Abate y Lavantia. This is the second in the in the series of four of these saffron based uh, soaps made by Chong Feng Sing for Abate y Lavantia. Another fantastic shave, really, really liking these soaps. The scent on this is delicious, smells fantastic. If you're someplace where you can buy these cookies and you can let us know how good they taste, that'd be fantastic. Recommended. And I do love the fact that on the label, this uh, this gentleman's mustache is clearly made up of these uh, Krumiri cookies. Very nice. And for the aftershave, uh, I'm going to put the lid back on before I hold it up again so it doesn't go glugging out. Uh, samples of the Meissner Tramonia. This is the mint ice menthol. Dark limes, also a very, very nice scent. Um, this doesn't have much scent, but obviously as an aftershave itself is working very well. As I said, Himalayan Heights as a scent did not work for me at all as an aftershave scent, but the aftershave itself was fine. Um, I still have three more to go. I think two of which are based on a dark beer and a vice beer, I believe. I think those are still coming up. And then I have Exotic Alemi, which is kind of a, a very woodsy, incense-like scent. So I'm looking forward to those uh, in the next uh, next couple weeks, likely. Well, I think we've covered all the products. Let me say again, thank you so much for watching. If you have comments or questions, please feel free to leave those against the video. I do my best to try to get back to them as quickly as I can. Thank you again so much for watching, and until next time, goodbye.